Hey guys, uh, Agent of Doubt here, and I didn't plan a really good video topic for today, but I'm going to get something off my chest. Um, I've been dicked around for pay uh, all my life, right? And I try to tell people to respect themselves because nobody else is going to respect you for you. You know, I try to tell people that uh, if there's better pay out there, you need to go for it. And there is better pay in the air, right? Like, this is the year where, uh, for the for the whole past year, I've been telling everybody, if you've been in the same job for more than a year, please check Indeed. Like, just do it for yourself. Do a little shopping and find out that maybe you need to jump ship and go to a competitor or some other place to work because there's better pay out there um <clears throat> the the rate of pay going up probably has something to do with inflation probably has something to do with people realizing that they don't want to work through a pandemic it doesn't matter what it is you need that better pay if you're not making good pay right so uh go go on and go get it but uh, there are some things that, that uh, happened to me in the past that have really uh, they've really kind of scarred me as far as pay goes. Um, first story, I'll tell you. Um, this happened when I was in the Army. I signed up for six years of service. Um, I didn't have to. I could have signed up for five years, right? And way back when, when I was in the Army, um, you got little bonuses here and there. I got Part of my bonus was uh, scoring well on the ASVAB test. Part of it was uh, <clears throat> my willingness to ship out within two weeks of signing some paperwork. And part of it was signing on for the extra year. But I couldn't get any of the bonus unless I did all of that stuff, right? It was all kind of tied together. And that bonus was about five grand, right? And of that five grand, I can say for sure that I still have a uh, guitar and a Marshall amplifier that I bought with that money, but that money was taxed. So it was actually, you know, as far as like spendable money, it turned into like three and a half grand. So, uh, yeah, um, and I didn't get it until I was well into my service, like 18 months in. So just uh, know that you don't get uh, bonuses for joining the Army until you've proven that you're going to stay in the Army. Because, you know, you could get an early discharge for all sorts of dishonorable reasons. Anyways, uh it came to the fifth year that I was in the Army, and uh, there was already a plan in place for me to be discharged as a disabled vet. They let me serve out my term in the Army while I was disabled, and uh, I still did the same job that I did except for uh, I wasn't required to do certain things during the physical fitness time in the morning. Uh, I was told to go run by myself instead of running with the group uh, because my pace was not going to keep up with the group. That was about the extent of the change, except for the physical fitness test. Uh, I was barred from running in it, so I was never going to have the promotion points uh, required to get to the next uh, promotion. So I was basically uh, dead in the water as far as career advancement in the Army. Uh, and I was looking at that last year that I had left to serve. And I was realizing I signed up for that year, you know, and, uh, for that year, I got maybe if we took the whole five grand that I got the whole thing and just, uh, ascribed it to that year, <sighs> that year I made $18,000 that, that final year. Now, part of it was because I was a single soldier and I was required to live in barracks. And I wasn't getting any extra money like married soldiers did. 
that really pissed me off because these married soldiers they uh they would have to take their wife to like a doctor's appointment so they'd get off work all the time sometimes it had to do with their kid they'd have to leave work you know and they were leaving work all the they'd find so many different reasons and sometimes uh in one case in particular there was a a soldier who had a pregnant wife who uh she just made so many appointments just so that she could have lunch with her husband in the chow hall that was inside the hospital so uh basically every day i was picking up the slack for uh soldiers that brought more uh family responsibilities that took them away from the job and they got paid more money than me because the way the army works is if you have more dependents you get more money that's it so uh they got allowance for housing some of them got to live off post when i didn't get to live off post um you know they got allowance for food when i didn't i had to eat in the chow hall for free or use some of my regular pay for money uh to buy food with if i wanted to go out to eat so uh they they just were getting hundreds upon hundreds of dollars more than me per month and yet they didn't work as hard as me because they were gone all the time. That pissed me off, right? And so I made $18,000 that final year that I was in the Army. And the next year after that, when I worked for General Electric doing the exact same job, except for I didn't have to do the physical fitness stuff, uh, I made double that money, right? And that was uh, a job that nowadays would probably pay around $50,000, but, uh, you know, weighted with like 20 years of inflation back then, it was like $35,000, right? So in, instead of making 35000 that last year that I was in the Army, I made eighteen. And if you add that $5,000 bonus, then, you know, it was like... 23,000 versus 35,000. I cheated myself. It was it was a bad deal. You know, the the recruiters flashed money in my face. I was a young kid and I fucking took it, right? And so those are years of my life I'm never getting back. You know? And uh I still feel burned by that experience. Really really fucking burned. And I tell anybody who I think might be thinking about joining the military, you know, sign up for the lowest amount of out of years of your life that you can at first so you can try it and see if you like it. Um, <clears throat> so after that, there was another pay experience I had. There's, there's a whole bunch, but I'll, uh, one that I'll talk about is... Uh, I got someone hired onto a job that I worked at, and I was working the night shift at that job. And that person had been in the field that I was working in, in addictions, for over 20 years. And that person got hired onto a day shift position. And I was working night shift at that job because uh, it paid like $5 extra an hour. And when this person got hired onto the day shift, uh, this person did not have the same credentials as me, such as at the time I had a bachelor's degree and this person did not. That This person was grandfathered into having the same credentials as me, which now require, at that level, a bachelor's degree. But this person was just grandfathered in for having the credential before that requirement was put on the credential. So uh, we were both working at that job, and then I came to find out that I was working night shift for that $5 extra an hour, and this other person's working day shift and getting paid way more than me, even with the night shift differential counted into it, because I, even though I'm, I'm middle-aged now, uh, I didn't have 20 years of experience in the same job, right? Well, I'm just one of those people that, A, 
Uh, I'm a disabled vet, so I, I lost six years of my life as far as doing any job for my entire life. Uh, B, I uh, had a midlife career switch where I used to be an electrician of sorts, the electronics calibration technician and an electrician, all in that same sort of career. And I switched into behavioral health because it was more of my passion. You know, that's this is what I want to do. So for the uh, the crime of switching careers in the middle of my life and using the uh, the lived experience of that other career to help counsel people in their in in my new job, you know, knowing how construction sites work and how hard it is to get a job and and how you know certain stresses can be put on you. I bring that to the table, but I have not been counseling people for all of those years that I wor worked for the Army and for GE and for the Electricians Union. Uh, all those years put together count for shit for this employer that we both had, right? All that mattered was how many years have you been doing this job at this level? And so when I found this out, uh, it was one of the reasons that I cited on my exit interview uh, because I decided uh, they don't get to tell me that just because I uh, am starting in this field that I'm not worth as much as this other person because, uh, for one, I had you know more education under my belt. I had a degree more than them. And for two, uh, look at my job performance. I was managing that place. And she was not on the day shift. I was managing the place on the night shift. And, you know, handling a lot of bullshit. A lot of bullshit. I'm still scarred from that job. And still, this person was getting paid more than me. Now, I don't hate on that person for making more money than me. You, you do you. Like, I will, I'm not going to argue, argue that, that that person should have made less. I just value myself and I want to make more. Whatever anyone has to do to find themselves in a position, in a job where they're making more money, more power to you, you know? And in that particular uh, employer, if you had many years of experience doing, you know, however well you did, but if you just had more years, they're going to offer you more pay up front. Any place that offers that sort of pay structure loses me now because I'm one of those people who has a lot of other lived experience. I had different careers that I put to rest in order to be in this one. If you want me to uh, show you how well I could excel at your job, that's fine. Pay me. You know, Don't treat me as if I am not a middle-aged person and treat me like uh, I'm an intern that just got out of college, you know, um, as a 20 something, you know, I still am at this level of life where I need to be able to afford it, you know, and, uh, in my, in my opinion, there are certain things you should be able to afford at my, at my career level. If you have a master's degree and, a license to do my job from the state, I feel like you should be able to afford a, a home mortgage in my city. But with the median house price in my city being like $600,000, I don't see it happening. So uh, there's a lot that uh, needs to happen to the pay structure of uh, every job in my city. Uh, in my field and outside my field because uh, either housing prices need to crash by about half or uh, we all need to get paid more because uh, you can't live. You just can't. So um, I respect myself enough to know that uh, if a job doesn't pay me enough to be able to live in the same city where the job is, I'm not working it. That's part of the reason why I left that job. 
And recently, I had another pay experience that reopened an old trauma wound uh, where uh, w my first job working uh, at a printing press, uh, I had uh, two raises. Each one was a nickel. So I was making four thirty-five after I got started at four and a quarter. And then while I was working there, uh, the minimum wage raised from four twenty-five to five ten. We called it five and a dime, and that uh, erased the two little nickel wage wage raises that I had. Those those raises just went away. All of a sudden, I was making minimum wage again, and uh, I had an experience with an employer recently where they were offering me a little bit more than the bottom of the range of their pay. And then in the course of the time I was applying for the job, uh, they did an entire like pay review because they were hemorrhaging uh, clinicians that were working there to jobs that were paying better. So they decided that they needed to pay better as I was applying for the job. And so they raised the... Uh, level of pay for every job the, the range right well i got a new offer letter with a different uh offer for pay which was higher than what they were going to offer me before by about two bucks so i shouldn't be able to complain right well the initial offer i got was two dollars more than the bottom of the range Again, one of these employers that decides that the, the length of time you have in service is how much you're worth as far as what they're going to offer, right? This new offer was the exact bottom of the range. So basically, uh, them deciding that the, uh, the cost of living had gone up and then the, they needed to raise the pay ranges erased what they were willing to offer me as far as you know, the little bit extra I had from the bottom of the range that was related to my experience or expertise in doing, like, DUI therapy and whatnot. And so I got pissed off. Like, once again, I had this uh, flashback to, you know, that first little job I had where, you know, my two little nickel raises got erased. And uh, I'm looking at uh, pay around the city and uh, how much it you could make at uh, McDonald's. A manager at McDonald's right now uh, makes, I think, 25 an hour. And I'm looking at, like, the multiple of take that as being, like, the baseline of what I could do at my age and, and uh, you know, I'm... I'm well overqualified for that job i get it but um even the uh the entry-level worker at mcdonald's making like we'll say 18 an hour in my city multiply that uh and see like what that is translated to versus somebody at my level of pay and what I'm finding is the uh, effective minimum wage, like the lowest paying job you can find in the city, you know, somewhere between 15 and $18 is where it is right now. There's nothing that pays less than that. Nobody will take a job for less than that. You absolutely can't work for less than that, right? This effective minimum wage that we have is very close to all of the middle class job pays like basically the the minimum wage has gone up 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 the like what uh unskilled labor is making keeps on going up but the uh middle class jobs are still making the same pay everywhere around the city and so uh it's very hard to escape uh poverty and try to uh you know pull yourself up by your bootstraps when you find that there's this kind of like uh tapering of returns for wanting to better yourself in your career when i first started uh my 
working days at the age of 18. Um, minimum wage was four and a quarter. And I saw a nurse with a bachelor's degree making $35 an hour. And, uh, you know, just divide what minimum wage is, or, or what minimum wage was into how much she was making. And she was making about 10 times the minimum wage, right? Um, and that's what I was shooting for in trying to uh, better myself, get more education, get more licenses, just professional development, do trainings, do extra trainings in, in subspecialties like uh, addictions, DUIs, EMDR, uh, all sorts of other uh, therapeutic modalities, get all this training within me. And yet, uh, whereas 20 years ago, I could have had a, a pay for, for this much of, of training as a clinician. I could have had a pay 10 times what minimum wage is. Now I can't even find things around town that are two or three times the minimum wage that, that is effectively what's going around town. So, because no one wants to pay more. And yeah, the, the absolute minimum wage has, seems to be going up a little bit, but the, the middle class range of pay seems to be compressing. And, and, and the lower wages are like raising up to it, but like the, it's not going up, uh, especially not in relation to uh, home prices. Wages are stagnant versus home prices. And uh, I'm not going to work for any place that uh, is going to pay me what I can't uh, use to go afford a home. So I'm gone. And people wonder why there's so many people who've just checked out of working at all, you know? There's there's a a calculation to all this, you know, uh, and uh, I got to think that a good portion of them are just uh, realizing that their jobs put them at too much risk in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, I know a lot of right leading people are like, oh no, they got spoiled by getting free money from like unemployment that uh, went unchecked for so long and stimulus checks and all that but no I think people are just realizing that like something's really wrong with our economy really really fucking wrong and uh, I just wanted to point out with this ramble that picking a metric such as how many years someone has been doing a job and and calling that the be all end all of how much you're going to pay that person says nothing about their actual value to the job because uh in my uh experience i have been far more valuable to the workplaces that i've been in than they were paying me versus some people who had been there in that field for uh, longer periods of time and were not uh, putting out the output that I was and sometimes were even a detriment to the job. Sometimes. And uh, to see that other people who I don't value as much at my workplace making more money than me uh, can stay there and continue to make more money than me just based on that uh, that one metric um, that's going to make me not want to work for that employer and so Anyone who switches careers into another job that they're more suited for, and the whole reason why they switched was because that was more their passion. Anyone who does that 
is going to avoid an employer that decides to pay people based on that metric. So that was the whole point that I wanted to say in this ramble. Some of the little things in this uh, ramble I know I've said in other stories before, but you're hearing it in a different way of how it, it all falls together in my head of I'm tired of being fucked for pay. And so are a lot of other people. Especially this year. Take care, everyone.